Good morning, ladies. It's Dr. Kira Laurie, and I am here with a dear friend and colleague, Erica Zeal, and she is an expert in using your body's fascia as your superpower, and that's not a topic that we address enough. So welcome, Erica. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much, Carol. I'm so excited to chat today. Oh, good. So <laughs> I don't think women even know what the fascia is. Let's mm. just start with basics 101. That's an important topic. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about it. So I like to explain fascia as it really encapsulates our entire body. So it is what makes up our, our joints and our ligaments. Uh, fascia wraps around all of our muscles. It wraps around our muscle spindles. It wraps around all of our organs. And if you were to take, say, the outer layer of fascia, you know, from our body, it would be the entire outline of our body from our forehead to our fingertips and all the way to our toes. And it's really what connects everything together. Um, it encapsulates a lot of lymph. Uh, you know, we have a lot of lymph that goes around our body, which I feel like we'll, we'll get talking about that today uh, with movement in particular but also uh, our nervous system as well. And so I know when we're talking about health and wellness, our nervous system is a big topic of conversation. And while fascia wraps around every single nerve in our body, so when we can start to understand the role that fascia plays and how we can tap into our fascial system better, we can start to feel so much better and we can it can actually improve our energy by working out super gentle and being really, really kind to our body um, because we actually know research shows that electrical currents actually can run through fascia. So it's really exciting for so many facets uh, when we start understanding a little bit more about fascia. The other really cool thing about fascia is that because we are always, you know, cellular rejuvenation is always happening, even if it's a little bit slower as we're getting a little bit older, it's still happening. So the cool thing is, is we actually can create more fascia all the time and we can create better functioning fascia. And so when you kind of start to understand all of that, it opens up this whole world of possibility and potential. And we'll talk about that today. <laughs> That's exciting. So how, you know, so when women are on tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitor, one of their main side effects is muscle and joint pain. Mm -hmm. And I've had women say to me, I, you know, getting out of bed to go to the bathroom is like a major torturous event, which is no quality of life. So that involves inflammation and that involves the fascia, correct? Yes, absolutely. So we are going to feel inflammation in our tissue, right? Fascia. Um, obviously, it's going to affect our nerves, our nervous system. So when we can start thinking about well, what are some movements that we can do that are really gentle? Because I think so many times, and this is where I always like to kind of like uh, debunk the myth of like, you know, exercise. So many times I think of quote exercise is like, we got to be working up a sweat. We got to really be getting our heart rate up, right? We got to be... Right. And I'm all for that. Like, absolutely. I am nothing against that. I lift weights. I do those things and I want women to do those. But there's a time and a place in our life um, when we're dealing with health things. I've had my own health struggles to where I couldn't work out at all. Know, right? Do you want to share a little bit about your <laughs> struggles? Because Sure. Like, Make sure I come back and answer this question, yeah, though, because sure. it's really good. Yeah. Uh, this will probably tie in a little bit, too. So, well, I mean, it kind of goes way back. I mean, while I, why I do movement, let's talk about that briefly. So I dealt with pain from a really young age at five, a knee pain curled up in a ball, a lot of nights going to bed. I grew up on way too much Motrin, which I'm sure did not help my gut issues. I have dealt with no, I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, I now like will not take it at all. And right? I have so many other modalities of things that I do for pain personally, but um, that's what catapulted me to really, really start to really realize that movement can be healing. And it's what drove me to study exercise science and then Pilates and really just start to understand so much Pilates. more. I love yes. Pilates. Yes. One of my most... <laughs> For those women who don't know what Pilates is, you're on these flat reformers and then you control the resistance and you use your legs and your arms. It is a very wonderful form of exercise that does not involve jumping up and down or anything like that, right? It's very gentle. It can be. It can be very gentle. I mean, like any, a lot of things. It, things can go from, you know, you can make some things really gentle, really aggressive. Um, but so when I was growing up, they kept telling me my knee pain was uh, growing pains. Well, finally, when I 
way past growing, right? We finally realized that I need to strengthen my body. And so that was the piece that catapulted me into movement. Um, but then in 2018, I dealt with mold toxicity, which like, I feel like it like about derailed my entire life. And uh, like it was bad to the point where I couldn't hardly get out of bed. I couldn't look at screens. I couldn't run my business. I couldn't hardly take care of my children. Um, and luckily because of all of the knowledge that I have, I was aware of mold and that piece came up when I was like, I can't get out of bed. Like I can't function. I couldn't, I really had to stop working out. I couldn't even do my really much of my gentle stuff that I like to teach. And um, so anyway, that was a whole. That you were ex being exposed to mold. <laughs> Cause it's a secret thing, you know, it's like, you can't see it sometimes yeah, and you, you go it. to the doctor and then they do regular, the regular doctor, they do these tests. And the next yeah. thing you know, the prescription pad is pulled out and they go, mm -hmm. there's the ringing bells. Well, let's just put you on some antidepressants and see if that will yeah. work. Don't let yeah. them do that to you, ladies. No, no, do not. You have to trust your intuition. And that's the piece for me. And I think because I've been into holistic health my oh. entire life, um, Actually, who put the the piece in my head was I listened to Dave Asprey yeah. a couple of years prior to that. And he talked about his mold experience. And I knew something was wrong prior to like basically crashing, as I say. Right. Um, but I, I was on this search to try to figure it out because I was having all these food sensitivities. Like I was doing everything right. I was eating healthier than ever. And I was like, but I'm like getting weaker and I'm so I was getting so ill. And I had actually gone to California because we lived out there for a while. So I was back out there for like five days. And I was actually doing some trying to figure out and going to people I knew that were outside the box thinkers to be like, what's wrong with me? And I just kept getting, well, there's something wrong with your brain. I'm like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yes, yeah, something's wrong. Thank you for telling so, I, me something I already know. Yeah, I, I knew that. So I had come home and within within 12 hours of being back in my house is when I crashed. That was when I had the light bulb moment. I was like, we have mold in this house. And um, it was a little bit of an intuitive thing. It was a little bit of putting the pieces together and it was just something I just knew. Um, and so we went down that whole rabbit oh, hole, which in the end, um, it we thought it was in the master. That's where we master bathroom. That's where we first started tearing apart. But then luckily at the same time, we were actually getting the roof repaired. The roof was the biggest problem. It was like the perfect storm they had replaced prior to us living in this house, they had replaced the, like the sheet stuff that goes mm -hmm. underneath. Yeah. Yeah. And they put it on upside down oh my instead God. of repelling oh water God. ladies. It soaked in all the water, which then it was like right above where our vet was for our washer dryer. And the, dryer part had come. We're actually lucky the house didn't start on fire. Um, although sometimes I'm like house, you know, mold is almost, it feels like just almost oh, as bad better. as a fire because like, right, you got to deal with the whole thing. Anyway, whatever. So, <laughs> so it was literally like the perfect storm because I work for my house. It was in my master area. I was the one that was most effective. I also don't detox as well, which is something I feel like a lot of those that end up with health issues, yeah. you know, we don't detoxify as well genetically. Um, so Anyway, that was a piece that really catapulted me to become an FDM practitioner to heal, help heal myself because I wasn't going to rely on medical because I wasn't getting anywhere. And I kind of barely even stepped my toe in it and realized now this, they well, don't even you, know what to do. If you go to yeah. a regular medical doctor and you have joint pain and swelling, they're going to give you ibuprofen or, you know, mm -hmm. send you to rheumatology and then give you worse medications. They're not going to think, well... Maybe you have food allergies, maybe you have food sensitivities, maybe you have mold in your house. That's a very upsetting story about the roof. Oh, it is. It is. And it just, you know, I, I've done a lot of work um, on working past that. It's been five years now, so I now can talk about it easily. And, you know, I help other people um, as well. The mold is is not something fun that I wish upon anybody, but also it keeps so many people sick and they have no idea have that no that's idea. what's keeping them sick. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This is really important for those of you who are listening now and later. If you have a whole bunch of quote unquote unexplained illnesses and you, I think one of the tests is go away for two weeks mm -hmm. and see how you feel. And it takes about two weeks. And then if you come back and within a few hours or days, you get sick again, ringing bells, everyone, this is you have mold in your house and you really need to find a mold expert. This is not like a general contractor moment that, because you have to be an investigator and find out where is it coming in? Where's the water coming in? 
And you also have to be ready and prepared to tear out the walls down to the studs yeah, and then do exactly. roll mold remediation. It's a whole big, you have to find experts in this, right, Erica? You do. And I will also tell people to also be cautious um, because there's a lot of, I say, fear mongering out there. There's a lot of people that are also there to take advantage of yeah. your money in these times. So you do need experts, um, but also get second opinions. Reach out to people that have actually worked with someone because I look back and there are things that we did that I would have done it a little bit differently. But I was so sick that it was relied on my husband and my mom and they were in survival mode, you know, and in that moment, you just do what you got to do to make it through. And like we threw away like 80 percent of the stuff in our house. And um, because either you have pitch it or you got to clean it. And because I was not able to help, it was kind of like my husband's like, I don't know what to do, you know. And looking back, like I if. I, we would have done things a little bit differently, um, but it is what it is. And coming out the other side, even if you ask my husband, which, you know, when you have, when two of you have moldy brains, even though he didn't exude symptoms like I did, because he detoxifies also better genetically. Um, thank God for his genetics, for my family, for my kids. But um, he was, he still had, I'm sure, a little bit of a moldy brain. And so when you have two not. spouses, the divorce rate among um, mold in <laughs> moldy couples is like, it's insane. It's way beyond the 50%, just FYI. I don't know if you know that, but so if there is tension in a, in a relationship and you have illness and all of that, like mold could be a, a piece of it. And so when you have moldy brains, it just catapults everything. But even my husband and I look back at that horrific time that we went through and we said we would do it again. I know that sounds horrible, but in the end, it brought us closer as a couple. That's it beautiful. really helped me to uncover my missing piece of my health, which was, I don't detoxify well, um, genetically. And I didn't know that before then. Um, it really made me understand detoxification, um, lymphatic system. You know, I was already teaching fascia before this, but this really took it to a whole, whole deeper level for me personally, but also professionally. So now it uh, just, I am also able to help other women when I realize, like, oh, like what I'm teaching you is helping you. But oh, you might have something deeper going on, and we need to you need to work with someone on it. So, thank you for sharing that. I I just want to say that for women who have had a lot of lymph nodes removed, and have lymphedema, or you've had breast surgery and you're still swollen underneath here, this is a time to reach out to Erica because there's a couple things. There's the symptom of the swelling. <clears throat> But if we go deeper, which is what Erica and I do, because she's a functional diagnostic nutritionist, which means she's had a very much higher level of understanding root causes contributing to illness. Um, and what you said is, I found out genetically I'm not a good detoxifier. So that is the power of functional medicine testing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> we both know that there are easy tests for us to order and to have you do, which diagnose, oh, you know, you don't exactly detoxify where you're having a problem. And then we can address that with food and supplements. Do you want to talk about lymph, the beauty of lymph, Erica, a little bit? And Yeah, yes, absolutely. Testing? Yeah. So, you know, getting your lymph moving is really important. And that's something I see with those of us who've had, you know, sickness and illness or dealing with things is that our lymph can become very stagnant. And when we talk about detoxification, which I feel like is in the mainstream is talked about all wrong, right? You hear about detoxification and detoxing your liver. And I'm not saying we may not need our liver detox, right? There, there's that. That's probably a piece of the picture, but if our lymph is stagnant, then any other detoxification we're doing, we could actually be opening up things in our body and causing them to recirculate and actually making us feel worse. So our downstream lines of detoxification and getting us to feel a little bit better, getting junk and toxins out of our body is our lymphatic system. And that's where movement and the fascial movement that I like to teach can really help to stimulate your lymph 
to move the limp. Like I teach a lot with, um, I should have grabbed one, my um, small soft heel ball. It's about this size and about this size and it's, it's soft and squishy. And it's so funny because I have, um, I love it from a gentle perspective of movement and exercise. And I actually like to talk about, I use the word movement a lot because movement to me is so much more healing. And I, I teach so much healing movement because I feel like so many women, we associate the word exercise and it's negative for us. We like think about, oh, we got to burn these calories or we're beating our body up or whatever it is. And it's like, no, especially when we're in this time of healing our body or going through health you know, health time, we need to really be nourishing our body. And so that's why I want you all to be thinking about movement right now is what movement can I do that's nourishing? And is the movement I'm doing nourishing my fascial system, getting my lymph to move and open? Um, because that is a downstream piece of detoxification that we really need to be working on every single one of us. And that's why I love the gentle ball work because we can do stuff standing at the wall and literally just be like rolling, like you were saying, you know, kind you of along the breast and underneath. Roll it underneath mm -hmm. here, right? And it would yes, be and it like can this. be. Hard. Yeah, don't use anything hard. I, I feel like so many times we think of like fascial release. It's got to be hard. We got to use like a lacrosse ball or a tennis yeah. ball. I don't, I actually don't use that. The only time I would, I would even say like, okay, grab a tennis ball is on your foot. Like roll your foot. Oh, you know, that hard pressure do. on your foot when you're sitting yeah. there, it feels great. That you I can do. But I, I have one underneath great. the table. That's awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, that, but, but as far as like, I see people that'll take a tennis ball, like roll out the shoulder. I'm like, no, I don't like that because here's, here's how I look at it is especially when your body is more inflamed and we have a, just a lot going on in the body. We've got stagnation in the limp. If we're doing something, say more deep tissue work or even deep tissue massage, uh, where it's causing pain and you're in pain while you're doing the ball rolling or foam rolling or deep tissue massage, that to me is too much for your body. Because if you're in pain with that extra stimulation, then, then what I, what I see happens is the tissue actually tightens even more. It might initially relax because you're forcing it to relax, but then it can tighten back up because it's like, Oh, I'm in so much pain. I've got to like grip and grab. And I, I talk a lot about grippy grabby muscles with my ladies because, uh, when we start to get grippy grabby muscles and imbalances, it can cause our pelvis to get twisted. It can cause our SI joint to become twisted or tilted. And then we get that SI joint pain in the low back, right down the butt, like down the leg, those types of things or neck stuff because of shoulders and people, I see people all the time like, oh, well, but some of my therapists sort of told me to roll my shoulder or my neck with a tennis ball. And I'm like, oh yeah, but to me, that's only actually exacerbating that tissue and possibly causing more inflammation. So I take the approach of less is more. And when we think about one, always working with our body. We're never fighting with our body. We're never working against our body. Nice We're truly, time. truly working <laughs> with our body and doing movement that is just helping us to feel better because I know during times of dealing with health things, we don't feel good anyway. So why would we want to add in any movement that doesn't make us feel good? Even if sometimes you're, you have that little whisper in your head that says, oh, I should be doing more. I should be feeling this more, right? Things like that. It's like, no, we got to pull it back and let's do the things that are really nourishing our body. And so when we can do the ball work or we do some really gentle movement with breath work, um, I like to, especially for women, stimulating that pelvic floor, that deep core to work, because then we're going to have more support for our pelvis, for our spine, all those things. And if you're doing, if we're a little more sedentary or maybe a lot more sedentary right now than you usually would be, we need to do some of those gentle movements so that we don't lose so much strength because we lose it twice as fast as we gain it. So any little bits you can do, even if we're not quote lifting weights or doing anything, you can actually become stronger working your fascial system than working your muscular system. Because what's the stat? Fascia, fascia is to the body what steel is to a building. So if we think of it like that, we can become, and I teach a lot of like how to become, you know, more 
uh, fascially strong and connected through our body. And so then it is more gentle. And but think about it too, ladies, like we're sitting a lot of our day. Um, you know, maybe if you're sitting or even if you're standing or even if you're heck laying down, you can do some really gentle movements and breath work. Breath work is really key to stimulate pelvic floor, the deeper layers of our core, all that fascia that I said that's around our organs, between our organs, above our pelvic floor, right? Um, our diaphragm, right? So we think about how much breath is really also involved. And when we're just bringing a little bit more awareness to how we're breathing, how we're holding our body, that in itself, even though it seems so simple, is actually going to help to make you a little bit more fascially strong and also can help to open up lymphatic system a little bit because we're just creating more space in our body. Can you give an example of how women could do a simple breath uh, to mm -hmm. open up? Yeah. Because I would love see that. that. I mean, I'm happy to do it here. That's great. Yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. So you can do this seated or laying down. Um, I think seated is probably the easiest right now. And if and you're not, what I want, excuse me, I just want to say, if mm -hmm. you're recovering from surgery, ladies, and you're in bed, you can do this in bed. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to be well enough. And if you even slight movement when you're in bed, keeps the stagnation down and that keeps the inflammation down and that speeds up healing. So little bits go a long way. Absolutely. Yes. And breath is breath really is more powerful than we realize. So what I want you to think about, and sometimes it can be helpful to close your eyes. If you're in a place where you can safely do that is closing your eyes and think about breathing in through your nose and visualize your breath going down towards your rib cage. So think about breathing out to the sides of your ribs and into your back and then exhaling out and just think about lengthening tall through your body through the top of your head and then inhale again visualize your breath going down your body out to the sides of your ribs and into your back and then as you exhale start to just connect lightly with your pelvic floor and then lengthen just from the pelvic floor through your torso all the way through the top of your head so it's super gentle and then again just inhale breathe deeper all the way down to your pelvis breathing out to the sides of your ribs breathing into your back and then as you exhale just think about gently lifting up from the pelvic floor lower belly all the way up through the top of your head and just think about this really gentle length through your body but think about it coming from inside your body not just with your low back. And so what we want to do when we're breathing is we actually really want to think about our breath going out to our ribs and into our back, which I know in the beginning is really foreign to a lot of ladies. They're like, wait, because you may notice you, when you breathe, you just go, shoulders go up and that's okay. Right? We have to be okay with where we are today. And when we can recognize that, okay, that's what's happening, which can mean that your, your whole nervous system is a little bit more restricted, right? So what we can start to do is just work on relaxing across. And sometimes a cue that can help is like across our sternum here, across our chest, not just shoulders. I hear a lot of like shoulders down, shoulders down. No, just relax your shoulders. Don't do anything with them. Just let them be. Think about lifting more and opening up across where your sternum is here. And then see if you can start to breathe a little bit deeper because when we breathe down towards that, not in our belly necessarily, you can do belly breathing. I'm not against it, but I really teach breathing for helping to get deeper into the body, help to activate pelvic floor lightly, right? So we're really starting to wake up all the fascia inside of our core around our organs and underneath our ribs, right? So if we can think about our breath going down, it's going to stimulate your diaphragm, which can help you in so many ways. And then if we're breathing out to the sides of our ribs, it's going to help us to open up so much. You can get so much movement. Yeah. Now, ladies, here's another thing you can do to practice mm -hmm. is if you feel like you're like, Eric, I have no idea what you mean when you say breathe into your back is just lay on your stomach. Try just laying on your stomach. So if you're in bed you, and you can roll over or next time you're in a position where you're laying on your stomach, just visualize breathing in through your nose and breathing all the way down into your low back. See if you can't start to get a little bit of release in that low back and in your sacrum. And this can be really helpful with some low back SI joint pain because we get so much restriction there. And especially if we're not getting much movement right now, we can be really stagnant, right? So anything we can do to just start to open things up, 
can help us to feel a little bit better, even if it's just a tiny little bit, but think about a tiny little bit here, a tiny little bit there. And yeah, then no. as you do start to feel better, you can start to do a little bit more. And the breath is huge. One more thing, uh, Dr. Laura, I wanted to mention with the breath because I always get women that ask is, they're like, but Erica, my lungs don't go down to my pelvic floor or go into my back. I'm like, I know they don't, <laughs> right? It's the people sometimes logically like, wait, that doesn't make sense. How do I breathe into my back but my lungs are not into my low back, right? It's because when we breathe properly and we're breathing down and back, we're, we are, yes, breathing into our lungs, but we are facilitating a response. Remember how I said fascia connects everything together? Mm -hmm. It's a really good example of how, okay, breathing into our lungs really deep into the back, not only are you opening up your lungs more, which is really awesome, activating your diaphragm, which is really important, but we can also stimulate all that fascia along our back line and in our low back to open up and to release. Um, and it really shows you the power that breath has for relaxing and kind of opening things up. And when we can soften our fascia, we actually, it gives us the ability to actually become stronger in our fascia. So many people want to just like release, release, release and stretch. Um, but I actually find like releasing more with breath work, releasing more with ball work, and then working on doing some gentle strength, which needs to be initiated with breath and then gentle movement. So that's the thing, ladies, for those of you that are feeling like, gosh, I can't do a lot of movement. Maybe you are in bed. Breath on its own is a great place. A absolutely great place to start. That's to get stronger, beautiful. Really. Thank you so much. That was just You're lovely. Welcome. Um, <laughs> And I think there's this tendency when you've had a surgery or any type of trauma to go, <gasps> mm -hmm. and you yeah. <clears throat> unconsciously, you're holding your breath and you're holding your whole body. So this gentle breath work and this gentle lymphatic with your soft balls is just really a way of real, beginning the process of relaxing. And it's a very it's feminine very way which yeah. is what I feel is important. So I'm going to put in the comments here, how do women reach you, Erica? What's your website, honey? Um, so ladies, you can just go to my website. It's ericazeal.com. Um, I have everything on there. Um, you know, my core rehab program is really, really my signature program that teaches women so much about movement, so much about pelvic floor, about moving in fascia and the breath work. And it just goes deeper upon what's, what we've talked about today. It's beautiful. <clears throat> I, um, I want to encourage everyone to really take, uh, to go here to Erica's website because there is this tendency when you're recovering from breast cancer to have this very gung ho, I'm going to do this masculine approach. And yeah, you know that I say we're it's not a war, we're not conquering, we're not attacking breast cancer, and um, because it's part of you. And that philosophy goes to the recovery component of your whole ordeal. I mean, we need to gently begin to unwind emotionally as well as physically. And there is no mm -hmm. more gentle way than what Erica is sharing with us here today. And the good news is no matter how debilitated you are, you can do a little bit. And these little bits mm -hmm. add up. And before you know it, you've, you know, you're 10, 15, 20% better. And that makes yeah. a really big difference. You can do this being in bed. You can do it sitting down. You don't need to start like this. That's not for I wouldn't you. start there. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't start I mean, there. <laughs> Carol, can I add one more thing? You mentioned something 100%. about the emotional, the emotional piece. So something that I, and there is some research out there that shows that our fascia holds emotion. We hold emotion in our tissue, right? So doing some of the gentle fascial opening and fascial work. And especially when we start kind of working on the pelvis, pelvic floor, that area, because as women, we tend to hold a lot of emotion in our pelvis, that it is really common that you start to feel more emotional. You may just, you may be having a great day and all of a sudden you're doing a little bit more movement and you just feel like I need to cry. I need to let this out or I feel angry. And you're like, I don't know why, or maybe you do. Um, and so I always prompt my ladies that that is a very possibility that can happen. And I'm not one that says you got to go down some deep 
road of figuring it out, I say, hey, if it's showing up, mm -hmm. that's a sign that it's time for you to let it go and move on with your life, right? So and even if it's little pieces here and there, so find a safe way to express it, whether it's going and punching a pillow, allowing yourself to cry later in the shower, or just right then and there when you're doing the movement. And it's amazing how allowing ourselves to express those emotions when they come up, not, you know, that it really can help to release and help you to feel so much better, not only emotionally, but also physically. They are so intertwined. We cannot fully disconnect 100%. the two. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> you can't recover your health <clears throat> if you're just looking at one component of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all connected. All the dots, <laughs> all, the <pieces. laughs> all the dots are connected. There we go. Um, Erica, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us. And ladies, ericazeal.com. Um, really, it's been a pleasure and an honor. And ladies, it's Carol Laurie. Have a lovely afternoon and there'll be more later. Bye for now, everyone.